Click the link in the description for your free Amsoil catalog. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of our friends. The Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Search for them on Facebook. Central Minnesota Pond Racing. Search for them on Facebook. The historic Lancaster Motel for the ultimate Eastern Trail Riding Adventure. Crane's Snowmobile Museum at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Vintage Snowmobile Club of America Quarterly Magazine. The Bridge Street Garage Racing Team, the house racing team of the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. The New Hampshire Snowmobile Museum at Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire. And lastly, if you decide to advertise with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this could be your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here tonight. I have a robust lineup of Vintage Snowmobile Entertainment on tap for you tonight. Can't wait to get into it. But before we do... Um, I want to make sure that everything is working properly, so if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Let me know where you're viewing this from. Also, let me know whether you're a, a regular viewer or a first-time viewer. And to our first-time viewers, I thank you so much for stopping in to check us out. I hope that you like it, and I hope that you decide to come back here every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time to join in the fun every single week. We do this live every Thursday night all through the uh, the winter season, October through the end of March. And we do have some comments coming in. Uh, before I get to those, I want to thank our regular viewers uh, so much for coming in here every week and especially for tuning in through the summer and for being here now that we're doing the live episodes again this fall. Thank you so much for being part of this and thank you so much for your loyalty. It really means a lot. I could not do this without you. It would not be the same. I guarantee you that. Uh, we've got some comments coming in. <coughs> Pardon me. Brian Van Haberbeek, regular viewer, looking forward to the show tonight. Thank you, Brian, for checking in, and I appreciate you looking forward to it. Brian also says that he uh, hears us loud and proud from Mount Bridges, Ontario, and I thank you for that. Uh, we've got Brian Noblock from Wausau, Wisconsin. I'm, I'm sorry, not Brian, Paul Noblock. My mind is playing tricks on me tonight. Okay, we have Richard Woodstock from Ottawa, Canada. Thank you so much for tuning in. Nick Kafez, regular viewer, loud and clear from Shelby Township, Michigan. And yes, he is a regular viewer. Yes, indeed. He was here with us all last season. Paul B Budakian from Burlington, Massachusetts. I used to, to live just down the uh, 
uh, road on 3A and Bill Ricca right on the corner of Pinehurst and 3A. Yeah, that was a long time ago, 35 years ago. But uh, great to have a uh, great to have you on the program, Paul. Thank you for checking in. Really appreciate it. Uh, Michael Carvella, regular viewer from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Seen any snow up there, Michael? Chuck Lewand from uh, Oh Snow in Buffalo. Let's go. So he's, I think Chuck is telling us that they've got some snow right now in Buffalo, New York. That is great news. Is it just a dusting or a an inch or two, enough to get a sled out for a quick rip in the yard. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Scott Verdon from Michigan. He's a regular viewer as well. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Brent Corbin from Owasso, Michigan, loud and proud. Thanks for checking in. And we've got Wayne Asp from Clear Lake, uh, Wisconsin. I thank all of you so much for checking in. Uh, let's um, get right into the program here. I'm just switching, uh, switching around on my interface. What have we got tonight? Um, last week I was telling you about a vintage snowmobile show and swap event that was coming up in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. And that indeed did happen over the weekend. I was able to attend that and had a wonderful time. Got some great footage, some great interviews. Uh, had a chance to run into a whole lot of friends. Uh, if you if you uh, go to the shows in, in uh, northern and central Vermont and New Hampshire, you see a lot of the same people. And over the years, we've become really good friends. So you really look forward to seeing them. And then you, you do see them and you have a nice visit with them and have a good time. And then you look back on it fondly. And it's, it's just really nice. And I was able to look, I was able to um, visit with a lot of my, uh, my regular friends at these shows. So I had a really wonderful time. And we're going to be talking about some of them tonight and showing some footage of interviews past and present that I've done with them. Uh, so let's take a look here. Let me get into the right place on my interface. Um, I, like I said, I did some interviews at the show in Bethlehem. We're going to be showing one of them a little later in the program with Mark Bristol. And if I interviewed you at the show and it's not going to, if you're not seeing it tonight, fear not. I try to spread these out through the season so I can have a, a nice variety of content all through the season. So if, if you don't see your interview don't worry, it is coming on a future episode. What we're going to look at now is I just kind of swung the camera around, got some different shots of the event. Uh, with some I put some music under it. Uh, let's take a quick look and give you just kind of a, a bird's eye view of what that show was like. <music> So as you can see, there's a nice mix of sleds, some good variety and some good, um, uh, just a good number of sleds there. It was really nice. And before we go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to the gentleman who put on that show. His name is Phil Bell. And that uh, that lot there, he owns that lot and it's directly across the road from his business, uh, Beach Hill Automotive. So if you're in that area, in the Bethlehem area, or needing uh, work on your car, he, uh, he does excellent work. And I highly encourage you to contact him about that he put on an excellent show uh by the way <clears throat> pardon me those those blue snow jets across the back there uh most of those were his he is he's rather fond of snow jets and if you want to have a look at him on the next episode on my opening you see someone uh, standing there pulling a snow jet 
uh, kind of lifted up the back end of it and pulling it along. That's Phil Bell. That's the guy who put this show on. Great guy, great show, and uh, kudos to him for an excellent show. Thank you for doing that. Uh, looks like everyone had a really good time. I know I sure did. Uh, so let's move on to the next um, next item here on the agenda. We've got some footage that uh, Dan Cunningham sent to me a few years ago for another project I was doing. This is some footage from the 2017 Snopen House Vintage Snowmobile Show. And I'm going to get in the right screen here. See, the more I do this, the more I have to pick from as far as things to click. And it, it actually gets a little bit cumbersome. So that's why I'm kind of hunting around for the next item to click. But I have it here all queued up, the video. Let's take a look at that Snopen House. St. John, Bell River, Ontario. This is my 1976 uh, Moto Ski Snow Pro 440X. Seven years to collect the parts to build it. Seven months to put it together. And I'm real happy that I have it now. Took it to Quebec. Got an autograph by Yvonne Dumahel, number 17. Got a picture of him sitting on it. <laughs> and how long did you said it took? Seven years, right? Seven years to collect all the parts. Wow. Seven months to build it. Wow. I started to finish. Absolutely. Got parts that came all the way from Sweden. Oh, wow. Absolutely beautiful. That was the worst part, finding the parts. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dave. No problem. Right. Glossy from Signet. Uh, this is 72 Evan Rude. We just picked this one up. That's the 69 Maceburg Ski Whiz. Those are our main collectors of the Ski Whiz. And did you do anything to restore it, or is that the way you got it? Um, yeah, we touched up the paint here and there a little bit. And it's a runner the way it is? Runs, yep. Yep, both of them do? Uh, this one does not run yet. Okay. But well, you're working on that, working I bet. Working on it. <laughs> All right. So. Awesome. They look great. Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Uh, well, so how cool would it be to have a sled autographed by the late great Yvonne Duhamel. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, and I would imagine this, this was before he passed away. Just, uh, uh, I don't know when it was in the last six months or so relatively recently. Uh, but this was several years before his passing. Um, so I would imagine the value of this has gone up significantly since his, uh, his, um, his passing, which was of course, very unfortunate. The whole community mourns that. Um, but, uh, for, for the gentleman who has this sled for Dave, who has this sled, uh, that must uh, increase the value of it, both for him personally and anyone who might ever consider buying a sled like that. Now, what uh, do we have next here on the agenda? Now, okay, let's talk about this. Last week, if you were viewing, I had Mike Mayhar on, and I'm getting a visual aid here. He is the publisher of this magazine, the uh, Vintage Snowmobile Club of America print magazine. And you can see on the cover here, um, sorry, everything's backwards as I look in the monitor. Um, this gentleman on the cover was voted best of show. His, his 1976 Polaris Starfire 340 was voted best of show at the uh, Vintage Snowmobile National Championship show, show and swap over the summer, which was a wonderful thing. And we talked about him briefly. And I mentioned uh, last week during that interview that I had uh, met Fred a couple of times at shows here in New England. Now, he is based out of Massachusetts. He just happened to travel all the way out to Wisconsin, and it was worth the trip because he got best in show and ended up on the cover of magazine. Well, I've been able to spend some time with Fred myself at a couple of shows, and uh, in a second here, I'll have that queued up. Let's take a look at Fred, and this is that very same uh, Polaris TX Starfire 340 that won best of show. Let's take a look. My name is Fred Albert. I bought this sled brand new. I raced it for three years. And after I got done racing it, I put it away for 27 years. And I finally took it out of the barn and decided to restore it. And this is how it is today. Right now. 
Beautiful. So these these trophies here, are these, are these trophies that you won? Uh, yeah, trophies we won. These from racing it? No, these are all show trophies. I got trophies. Show trophies, home, okay, yeah. It, but most of it's stuff, uh, racing this, most of the places were paying, you know, cash. Gotcha. You cash okay. Instead of a trophy. If sure. you ran local races, you would get a trophy. Uh, I ran a, some local races with, but not, yeah. not that many. Sure. And then you've got These a, are all trophies from the shows that I've been in. Shows you've been in. Nice. Where are you based out of? Westminster, Mass. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Okay, if I get some shots of this? When I was a teenager, my father bought a 76 TX250. It wasn't the Starfire. It was a, it was a consumer model, but um, I don't think he knew what he was putting in the hands of a 16 year old when he let me get right in. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was fast. I've had Polaris all my life. Oh, nice. Fred Albert and Peter Gallant. Pete, that's my son-in-law, Pete. He's yes, yeah. He helped me restore it, and that's what the picture of me racing. Oh, for an actual race. Whoa. Yeah, that's an actual race right there. Wow. Very nice. I want to have it let it again, you know, back to the original. Oh and yes, yeah, daughter, the race says, lettering. Uh, I don't know if you want to know or what, but yeah, yeah. I think it would just go more like it came out of the crate. Nice. Well, good. Well, thank you, Fred. I appreciate it. Thank you. So there, there you go. That was Fred Albert. Great to meet him. That was either 2018 or 2019, and that was at the Goffstown, New Hampshire Vintage Snowmobile Show, and I actually meant to tell you about that Goffstown show because they're having it this weekend. My good friend Bud Gordon is hosting that show, and I promised him I would talk it up. Let's look at a graphic here. Uh, this is just a snapshot somebody took of the flyer. It's really difficult to see, but it's this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Goffstown is just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire, and you can get a better look at this graphic. If you get on the Facebook, um, I'm sorry, on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page. I posted it there just a few hours ago, and you can click on that and open it up, get a better look. It'll give you directions and all of the details. But that Goffstown show uh, is an excellent show. I've been there a few years, and that's where I met Fred, uh, a few, either 2018 or 2019. It's a really good show, and we're going to be having, we're going to be looking at some more footage uh, of that Goffstown show in previous years later in the program, just to kind of tease you. Uh, into uh, maybe thinking about going to that show. Uh, it's just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire, so that's an easy drive to you to get to the Manchester area. This show is very much worth a look. It's happening this weekend, this Saturday. Um, so what else have we got here? We've got, um, yeah, I have to apologize. This fourth item, number four, uh, I have I was been I was having some trouble loading that footage earlier today, and it's all choppy. I'm having some issues with this computer. It's an old computer. It's just about time. For a new one so we're actually going to skip number four tonight we'll do do that another time but um we're going to go back to bethlehem new hampshire remember we talked about the bethlehem new hampshire vintage snowmobile show that happened over the past weekend well i had a chance to spend some time with mark bristol now if you watch this program you've seen uh, mark's son on here quite a lot Lucas Bristol, he came on live last year and showed us some of his racing sleds. Well, I had a chance to visit with Mark, and he had some sleds there at the show. Uh, let's pull that up and take a look. Here's Mark and his sleds. Hi, my name is Mark Bristol. I'm from Kirby, Vermont. We're at Phil Bell's place in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, snowmobile show. And this here is my 71 Arctic Cat Z. It uh, has a Kawasaki 292 engine. Dual carbs, crossover stingers, and it's made for racing. Uh, they, the beauty part is it's been fully restored, and they only made 96 of them. 96? So this is one out of the 96. Uh, who knows how many are left? Yeah. And underneath, get the dual carb cat pack on, crossover stinger pipes. Lunar oh, chassis for lightweight. Yeah. It only comes with a tack, no speedometer. 
that's all been re-chromed. Seats, been, everything's been redone on this thing. Every nut and bolt. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. And cool. What do we got over here? This one here is a. I just finished this one up. It's a 1980 Kawasaki Drifter, free air, one year sled. Uh, and originally it was blue, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to just do it a Kawasaki green. Yeah. Put some grips on it and customize the seat. Yeah, I like those pinstripes. It was actually a fun project. I mean, most of it's powder coated, all the steel. Um, handlebars are powder coated, skis are powder coated. Most of it in here is powder coated. Anything that's steel, belt guard, air breather cover, high temp black on the muffler, hood hinge. So this thing is totally taken apart. Every nut and bolt. Either the stainless hardware on it or we have powder coated it. And you're a powder coater by day, if I understand. Yes, I am. Cool. If you want to do a shameless plug on that. Oh, yeah. Performance powder coating located in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Uh, we do a lot. Anything metal can be powder coated. And it comes in many textures, colors. You name it, we can do it. As long as it's metal. Nice. Uh, and Barvin is 8 by 8 by 15. So we can do like race car chassis and stuff like that. Wonderful. I think we're one of the biggest ovens in the state. Yeah. And if somebody's thinking about maybe shipping snowmobile parts to you for powder coating, can you accommodate somebody like that? We can do that. We've nice. done that before. Okay, nice. So that's a common thing for you. We've actually, the furthest we've shipped was uh, uh, somewhere in Greenland. Yeah. It wasn't snowmobile parts, but it was a part that was built locally and had to go there. Sure. Uh, and what are some of the typical parts that they'll send you for powder coating? Well, some of the cool stuff is uh, we actually restored the... Uh, a scale for the University of Oregon Ducks and then oh, Portland, wow. Oregon. Yeah. So they sent it to us. We restored it, sent it back. Nice. Uh, lawn furniture, we do that. Uh, steam radiators, yeah. we do hundreds of them. Nice. But you don't get any runs or anything like that. So yeah. it does come out good. You can go to our Facebook page or our website. You'll see all kinds of photos and yeah. what we're all about. Nice. And as far as snowmobile parts, what are some of the typical parts of a snowmobile somebody would send you? Ah, uh, handlebars, skis, anything metal, belt guards, uh, anything like that. And they'll look new when we're done. Yeah, and it gives it a nice protective finish. Right, it's baked on. Uh, and we do have a chrome powder coat, too, which people do handlebars in. Yeah, gives a nice chrome-looking finish it and does. protective coating. Yep. I mean, it's not chrome, but it's the next best thing. Yeah. Good deal. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So that was really fun meeting Mark. And Mark uh, and I have been chatting since then. And he's invited me to come down there for a, a show and tell of the powder coating process. Because I, I live only an hour or so from St. Johnsbury. And I'm down there several times a week. Uh, so sometime in the very near future, I hope to go down there uh, and do some video uh, of him showing us the powder coating process and just how their whole operation works. And if you need some powder coating, I highly encourage you to give him a call. Uh, these guys do excellent work. I also want to mention one more thing about this Bethlehem show. It was an excellent show, as you can see. Uh, they're saying it's the first annual, and they're planning to do this each and every fall. Uh, I don't know if they've got a date yet for next year, but do uh, consider going to the Bethlehem show uh, next fall. It's a really nice show. It's a great location. Mother Nature sure cooperated. The foliage was in full bloom. It's just uh, it was really nice. Now, before we get into the next segment, we've got some comments coming in, and I do not want to ignore them any longer. We've got um, Wayne Prito from Vermilion, Alberta, Canada. Thanks for checking in. Why am I saying Wayne? Wyatt Prito. My eyes are playing tricks on me tonight, or, or maybe I'm playing tricks with my eyes. I don't know what's going on, but <coughs> pardon me. We've also got someone saying, hi, Mike. We've got Chris Wary from Barrie, Ontario. Thanks for checking in, Chris. Great to meet you. Uh, Sam Moore says, this is awesome, and thank you. We appreciate that, and you are awesome yourself for tuning into this every week. We really appreciate it. Our good friend Jim Layton is saying hi. He says he likes the sleds, and we're going to be uh, having Jim on at some point in the future. We had him on twice last year. He had some amazing sleds, and there's still more that he has not shown us. 
So sometime in the very near future, we're going to have Jim on, take a look at some of those sleds. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. So do uh, do keep an eye out for that in the upcoming episodes. Sam Moore says, this is nice. Thank you, Sam, for checking in. Really appreciate it. Glenn Wilkinson likes the sleds. Well, thank you, Glenn. Glad you're enjoying this. Our good friend Brian Robillard from Putnam, Connecticut. Brian is the first person to come on this podcast live. Uh, he has that wonderful distinction, and we really appreciate that. He's got some more things that we have not seen that he'd like to show us. Uh, it'll probably be a, a few weeks or a month or so out. His schedule is very busy. He's got a lot going on, but at some point in the upcoming season, we're going to bring him on again for some more show and tell. He's got some really nice stuff to show us. Peter Chappell from Cuyahoga, New York, regular viewer. Thank you so much for checking in, Peter. We appreciate it. And one more before we get back into the program. Paul Budakian says that Kawasaki Drifter in green was sweet. I absolutely agree. And one more. Robert Longshore says this is very cool. Thank you, Robert, for checking in. We so much appreciate it. Okay, what is next here on the podcast? Yes, I've got to give a, a shout-out to my friend Dave Shrou uh, Dave. Dave Stroud, um, and I'm going to tell you why. When I saw him at the uh, Bethlehem show over the weekend, uh, I had some art. He's a fellow Articat fan. I love all the brands, but Articat is definitely my favorite. The vintage cats from the early 70s. I just uh, love that. Well, he sent me a care package that came in today. As you can see, there's uh, cat stickers and Stroud racing stickers. Um yeah, I can't really unfold it, but, um, okay, here we go. He's got, um, some of these, which are absolutely amazing. He's got them in green and purple. Uh, these, of course, these iconic cat was here from back in the day. Um, yeah, and he just sent me a really nice care package, and I thank him so much for that. That is a cool thing. I, I imagine fans of every brand do this, but. Uh, all of my cat friends and I, we always have stuff like this to, that we're, give, we're passing back and forth to each other. It's really a lot of fun, um, and I look forward to that at the shows. You know, it's like kind of a secret cat um, club within a club or something, uh, and we really enjoy passing things back and forth like that. But um, I did a nice interview with Dave Stroud at the Bethlehem show, but I'm going to save that for another time because I don't want to – show all of my Bethlehem interviews in this one podcast. I want to spread them out over the season, but I've interviewed Dave numerous times at different shows. So what we're going to do instead of showing the footage from the Bethlehem show, we're going to show some footage I did with him. Uh, I'm going to say this is 2018 or 2019 at the crane vintage show, a uh, vintage snowmobile show in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Uh, let's take a look. This is Dave Stroud. Hi, my name is Dave. We're up in Lancaster today for a beautiful vintage show. I uh, brought my four out of cats up here. First one's a 1974, $295. Second sled, that's a 340 quad plug motor, pretty rare. Quad plug, wow. They didn't make very many of those. Uh, the next two sleds are uh, ice drag sleds that I use, run every once in a while on the ice and stuff. Next week there's a radar run coming up. I'm going to run those with some bigger sleds and stuff. But, uh, a lot of fun, this vintage stuff. You've got to keep it going, keep sleds running. Absolutely. Very nice. Any chance you lift the hood? I'd like to see that quad clock. Yeah. Holy cow, look at that. That's amazing. Got pretty rare. Green carbs. Look at this thing will move, huh? Runs pretty well. Yeah. Pretty well. Nice. And what year did you say this was? 1975. 75. Wow. Older than you are. No, 64. <laughs> but I remember these. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have good memories of these. Especially these when these came out. I was a teenager. Oh my God. Yeah. Got me all worked up when those came out. This one is uh, a favorite of my granddaughter and a grandson. They like to race this one. They race it? Wow. Yes, they do. Nice. And uh, same with the other one, my grandson. Nice. You get a 5,000 and a 6,000. That's correct. Nice. Free air and a liquid. Okay, yeah. This is the free air? Yeah. Nice. Boy, that's nice. 
this has an additional piece that's part of a track dyno that they had in the early 70s at the country. Oh, the, yep. okay, yeah. It's an, it's an original that you used, used to see in the 70s in the magazines. Really? Yep. I'm going to come around and get a shot of that. That's the brains of it right there. Wow. Uh, the other end that would spin on the track would spin and make it going? That's right. Yeah. You measure the horsepower and yeah. temperature. Wow. Everything. That's crazy. I've never seen one of those. Yeah, that company is long gone. Wow. That's wild. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Anytime. Cool. So that was Dave Stroud. And uh, one more comment about Dave Stroud. He does restorations. I um, took a snapshot of his business card. So it doesn't look that great. It's not like it's a computer generated graphic. It's just a picture I took of his business card, but this is how you could reach him. He's in New Hampton, New Hampshire. He does restorations. He does an excellent job. He's an excellent guy. He'll, he'll uh, treat you right. And uh, if you're thinking about restorations and it's driving distance from Hampton, from New Hampton, New Hampshire, give Dave a call. He'll help you out. So what do we have next here? We've got, um, we're going to talk. We're going to combine different things here now. Now, Lauren Canzior is a friend of mine that I've met at other shows, and uh, I met him a few years ago at the Goffstown show, which I'm. This is the footage we're going to look at. But I also had a chance to to uh, spend some time with him at the Bethlehem show, and I interviewed him at the Bethlehem show as well. Uh, that interview will appear in a future episode of this podcast. Um, but let's take a look at. Um, uh, I'm trying to find it. Here we go. This footage from the Goffstown show a few years ago, and there's a reason I picked the Goffstown show. That Goffstown show, like I said, is this coming Saturday. Um, if you like what you see here as I show you this Goffstown show, um, very much worth a look. It's just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire, and if you wanted to find the uh, details about the show, uh, go to the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page. I just posted it there a few hours ago. That graphic I had up earlier uh, is there with all of the details. Uh, let's take a look here at Lauren's uh, sled from a few years ago at the Goffstown show. My name's uh, Lauren Kanzor. I'm from Parisburg, Vermont. Uh, this is my 400 for year mod. It's uh, 74, 400 for years new, fully studded track, carbide skis. I've got handlebars from a 72 blizzard on it because the blizzard original handlebars were wrong. Yeah. And like a, so I replaced them with the yeah, yeah. handlebars. She gave me help for kneeling on that. It's got a funnel <laughs> 2 c clutch on it. We're dealing on it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I just use uh, Mother's Rag and Mule Ball. It's a rag. It's a good pair of the nice ones. Still has the original Toast and HD carburetors. Every now and then I have to redo it. Yeah, I'm going to get some more. Nice. Yeah, that's a sharp sled. Go ahead. A little blizzard tag right here. I made that. Uh, it's a piece of uh, paper laminated between plastic and uh, glued in there. That's cool. Nice. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Cool. So that was Lauren Ganzior's sled at the Goffstown show a few years ago. And like I said, the Goffstown show is happening this Saturday just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire. Let me pop the graphic on the screen again for that. And I apologize for the poor quality of it. It's just a snapshot of the flyer. Uh, but if you want a closer look at this flyer, go to the Vintage Snowbill Lovers Facebook page. I posted it there just a few hours ago. You don't have to scroll down very far to find it. Also, there's another show next weekend, and this is also... A a snapshot of a flyer so it's difficult to read but this one's in Hooksett, new hampshire just near the tolls on i-93 the uh, saturday the 23rd of october 9 a.m to 3 p.m and uh, if you want a closer look at that uh just go to the vintage snowmobile lovers facebook page and uh you can you can uh click on that image for a closer look at the details of that show and that promises to be a good time as well and um Let's see what else we have here. Now, I mentioned I was running into all of these friends at the Bethlehem show. Another friend that I ran into was Donald Tibbetts. 
Uh, he had a, a, some sleds at this show. He like he has the absolute finest unrestored original quality sleds that you're ever going to find at a show. And he has quite a collection. Um, he had some sleds at this show in Bethlehem over the weekend. We're going to take a look at some sleds he brought, or actually a sled that he brought to the uh, Crane Snowmobile Show in Lancaster a few years ago. And this is a um, an El Tigre. I think it's a 73 from what I can tell. 73 El Tigre, and he's got it in a in kind of a, a cradle, and he calls it the cat in the cradle. Really cool. Let's take a look at Don Tibbetts' sled. Yeah, so that's Don Tibbetts, El Tigre. Uh, I've seen him at so many shows and done interviews with him at so many shows. Um, and you've seen some of them right here on the podcast and on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page. If you get on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page and click on the videos and scroll down, you'll see different interviews I've done, I've done with him. And, and like I said, we did a new interview over the weekend. Can't wait to show that to you. That'll be coming up in a future episode. And I hope you look forward to that as much as I do. Uh, now that is pretty much it for tonight. It's a, a shorter program because uh, that one video that wouldn't load was was the longest video I had, and um, it I was just having some technical problems with it. Um, as I said, this is an older computer. It's time for a new one because it's starting to get a little quirky and buggy on me uh, when I try to do certain things, play certain videos a certain way. Um, but um, hopefully, it's sometime. Hopefully in the near future, I'll have, have a new computer and, and won't be struggling as much with these types of issues. Now, one last thing, um, two last things. I apologize. Uh, let's look at some comments, and then I want to get your feedback on something. We've got um, Sam Moore saying, nice dyno. Oh, he likes that dyno that um, Dave Shroud had. Absolutely. Um, also, um, Mark Mullins says, light gray. Closed caption guy is in a sled. I'm not sure I understand. Um, and then we have Nick Kafez. Great show tonight. Lots of cool sleds. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate it. Now, one thing I was mentioning last week is I've got a new lighting system. And I'm very happy with it in that it eliminates a lot of the shadows. I had kind of an Alfred Hitchcock thing on the side of kind of a profile. If you used to watch those Alfred Hitchcock movies. Now, when we were doing the podcast last week... Um, my face looked like it was bright red, like a lobster almost, when I was playing it back. Tonight, it seems that my, my skin tone seems a lot more natural, but I'm going to do a quick A-B comparison with you guys and uh, see what you guys think. Now, when I change the light setting, it takes a moment for the camera to adjust to it. But this is, we'll call this setting A. See if my skin tone looks natural to you here. Let's switch to... Setting B, as you can see, it takes a moment for the camera to adjust. And this is the setting I had last week. This is where my skin looked bright red like a lobster. Um, what do you think? Do you prefer B? This is B. Let's go back to A and, of course, give it a second to adjust. This is A. And then back to B. So my question to you guys is which of these from where you sit uh, looks more natural as far as my skin tone and just looking uh, human? And not like a lobster like I was last week. Thankfully, from what I'm looking at here in the monitor, I don't look uh, lobsterish like I did last week. That was B, I think, and then back to A. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys have thoughts about that, uh, just uh, make a note in the comments, A or B. 
Uh, let me know which one you think. Actually, it's it's starting to look red now. I don't know. Uh, Paul Bodakian says A. Good to know. I don't know. It changes by the minute. But uh, <laughs> this is B. And then back to A. Yeah, we're having some consensus here. We've got two people that have checked in saying A. And I thank you so much for that. Um, we've also got Jason Seimer. Jason Seymour, Seimer, I'm not sure how you're pronouncing that. Need to find a track for a 72 Elan. Any suggestions? Can't find one anywhere. That is an excellent question. Um, if anyone is uh, viewing this and you know of such a uh, track for a 72 Elan, please reach out to Jason there in the comments. And uh, also, I would also encourage you to uh, check out Al's Snowmobile uh, Parts Warehouse in Newport, Vermont. They uh, very likely might have it, and um, I can't think of anywhere else. But they, if, if they don't have it, I don't know who does. But, yeah, as I'm looking here, I see four people that are voting for A. Five people. And A is the setting we've got it on now, so I think, I think I'm going to keep it. So, yeah, Nick says it look, he's never seen me in person, but it looks good on the monitor and, and actually that's all it matters is how how does it look you know as it goes out because a lot of people are viewing this um yeah and if it makes me look better than i look in person well so much the better who knows but uh anyway that is all we have for you tonight i thank you so much for tuning in be sure to tune in here next thursday night at the same time 9 p.m eastern time for another live podcast i hope to bring someone on live yet uh, I hope to bring uh, someone on live on the program. I'm not quite sure yet. There's a couple of people I'm talking to, but um, I, I hope I, my goal is to have someone on here live every week, a live guest. Um, but that can be challenging sometime. With it's a moving target with their schedule and my schedule, and it's not always easy to do that. But uh, uh, I'm working toward that to have live guests on here as often as as humanly possible. So please look forward to that. And uh, on the weeks that I'm not able to do that, thank you for your understanding. And on the weeks that I am able to do that, uh, I appreciate uh, you, you, you viewing it. All right, guys, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for viewing. We'll catch you on the other side next week. And um, this, uh, I'm in the wrong screen again, sorry. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look at uh, this video from our friends at Mad Rams.